right, we all heard of new electric cars, but what about their battery and charging system? Ah, oh, I'm out of choice. Today, we will break down how pure electric cars get their charge. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe below. Speaking of charge, do we have any more? Breakfast, maybe? Anyone? Behold, the tiny capsule of energy that power this, this, and this. So, how does this little guy get rid of gas? Now, let's not confuse the pure electric car battery system with the battery that starts the engine of a combustion car because they are very different. The pure electric car works more like appliances with batteries like this lithium ion placed in a set but with larger electric vehicles we need thousands of these. These sets are called modules and are located at the bottom of the electric vehicle making them easily accessible. As you can see in this Tesla Model S, each module is made up of 444 batteries. And for this specific type of pure electric car, there are 16 battery modules or 7,104 batteries in total. The entire pack weighs about 550 kilograms but a very small portion of that is lithium. So, we know how these batteries, packs and modules are set up, but how exactly are they charged? We've all been here, haven't we? For most of us, it's the phone that dies first. Me, I have many gadgets. My RC is my favorite. Anyone seen my charging cable? Merci. Once you plug your device into a charger, the positive material inside the battery is oxidized. Then it produces electrons and in turn, the negative material is reduced, consuming electrons. To put all this in simpler terms, when the energy is pushed into your battery, the chemical process inside your battery is reversed and all that depleted power is recharged. Electricity fills the battery the same way food fills your bed. I still haven't had my breakfast or coffee. You should know charging terminals are complex. There are various types on the market. Private, residential, collective, roadside, and they host a variety of plugs. Type E, 2, 2S, CHAdeMO, COMBO, CSS, these chargers for current into the vehicle, but not at such a rate to cause battery damage. Each pure electric vehicle has a battery that is designed with specific requirements, which determine its charging compatibilities. That's why there are many types of charging stations and ports. Depending on the relationship between vehicle and charger, the charge can take any time from a few minutes to several hours. This is crucial for the batteries of pure electric vehicles because drivers want the fastest possible recharge. Speaking of, let's check on my RC. I wish it was this simple with real electric cars. Unfortunately, it's not. And to explain the details of electric charging stations, I've brought along a good friend from Nexons. Everyone, please welcome Thibaut. Hello, Frederick. It's good to be here on What's What. Yes, charging an electric car is not always so simple. Can you tell us why? Of course. A lot of it comes down to the capability. As you mentioned, there are many types of charger, ports, stations and vehicles. And although some are more popular than others, in all cases, the energy transfer can be broken down into two main categories. AC, DC. Not the rock band. No, not the rock band. 
but let me give you a quick breakdown in regards to charging pure electric cars. AC distributes the current supplied to the vehicle and however, the vehicle itself must convert that energy into direct current or DC, then store it in through the battery. DC, on the other hand, supply to the vehicle. They must adapt to meet the requirements. They are therefore more complex but also provide faster charges. Wow, so AC charging puts more demand on the vehicle, whereas DC charging requires technologically advanced stations. And in the future, method of charging will be more readily available? It looks like it. Today, electric charging stations are being built in homes and daily destinations like your local supermarket. This growth has been largely encouraged by policymakers around the world and more daring technologies are being developed as we speak, like inductive charging, which would enable charging equipment installation inside our roads, allowing pure electric car to be charged while being driven. Besides that, manufacturers are working to improve technology to ease the charging experience and eliminate potential limitations of the electrical network. Incredible! So, when charging is more accessible, do you think electric cars will become the standardized form of transportation? Maybe so. In France, for example, 16 million electric vehicles are expected to be in use by 2035. That's a great step towards climate neutrality, but it isn't all sunshine and roses. This increase will indefinitely demand for more charging stations and require a ton of power supply, with a total electric vehicle demand amounting to about 8% of the total energy. You know what that means? load peaks. That's right. In the future, electric vehicle may put a heavy strain on power grid. Well, peaks caused by vehicle recharge could be offset by decreasing other fields of electric activity. Also, recharges could be scheduled during the day when decarbonized generation is high or during the night when the consumption is at its lowest level. New charging technologies aim to improve the human to machine interface for users to express their needs and enable more cooperation with the grid. Besides, Usage may also vary in the future with the introduction of pure electric vehicles, creating opportunities for car sharing and carpooling. Last but not least, Nexus is currently experimenting algorithm to support wind energy injection on the electrical grid with the support of charging stations. Wow, sounds like we have challenges ahead. Right, but there is time. And hey, that's what scientists are for. Plus, electric vehicles are worth it. Research has shown that they are better for the environment than gas-powered cars, even accounting for their production and the electricity required. Oh, and that's not all. New ways of further reducing carbon footprint are being explored. Here's a cool ID, the V2G. The what? Oh, Frederick, the vehicle-to-grid concept. Get with the times. A car is generally parked 95% of its lifespan, and when an electric vehicle isn't on, it's still a battery. The stored power could be used to power a house or, if not, re-injected into the local grid. The battery can also store renewable energy, then use it at a later time. RTE calculates that in 2028, the cumulated storage capacity of electric vehicles in France could supply in electricity a city such as Bordeaux with 250,000 residents for 15 days. Wow, those scientists have been thinking. That they have. That's all from me, Frederick. Don't think too hard. Oh, and by the way, our boss called again. You need to stop playing with that RC car at the studio. What are you talking about? I will never. I was just demonstrating anyway. Well, that's all we have for today. Remember, electric cars are powered by modules. Modules are made up of rows of batteries. There are many types of charging station and ports, but all of them use AC or DC technology. Pure electric cars charging requirements pose some potential challenges for the power grid. So what do you think? Are electric cars the way of the future? Or will they lead us to the same dead ends? Any suggestion on how to improve them, adapt and overcome the scientific challenges of tomorrow? Drop a comment below, give us a like and please share. Thanks again, I'm Frederick from What's What, until next time. Now where was I?